Hi everyone, it's your boy Zach, and well, I bet you didn't see this one coming, neither did I. So this is my review of the 2015 super flop, Mr. Right, written by canceled screenwriter, screenwriter Max Landis. I am as surprised as you are. So, um, I, uh, you know, uh, I've got a business where I sell comics, but I also review comics and movies. Uh, the, th the funny thing is this channel makes like nothing. This channel makes like $20 a month. Uh, I would swear I like this channel as much <laughs> as the other one that makes a lot more. Um, so I treat, I treat it seriously. I was like, I should, you know, have some, you know, consistent reviews, consistent product. And I always have a list. I'm never done. You know, there's always kind of like a to-do list. Oh, I got, I got, you know, these 10 movies in my watch list on Netflix. I got, or that's a Q, right? And then I got these six movies in my watch list on Amazon Prime. And I just added this one because I just found out about it. And then there's this shit. So, um... I've been aware of Mr. Right for a long time uh, because Max Landis, before he got canceled, uh, he was like, uh, I don't know, God, it's a weird word, wonderkind. So everyone hated him <laughs> for different reasons. Um, he was uh, really obnoxious. He would dress like, uh, I don't know, kind of like the Riddler. He was like super, he, he dressed like the Riddler, looked like the Joker. He was the son, or he still is the son of a, I, I, I don't know. One of the, one, one of the things I think is probably the least fair criticism of him is that his father being a director just opened all the doors to Hollywood to him. Um, his father is John Landis, who had a heyday of the early 1980s. Um, uh, so the idea that people have kind of heard of your dad uh, is just going to open every door in Hollywood. I always found that to be a little silly, but he, he kind of got social media. He had a YouTube channel. He, you know, he's very active on uh, Twitter and uh, Instagram, and he would just uh, he would blog. Uh, he would do criticisms. He would tell every single part of you know what a career is like and pitching and all these type of different things. So uh, it was kind of really cool to see someone who just laid out like the entire creative and professional process of being a young screenwriter in Hollywood. And for like one year, he was the top of the top. All he did was sell, um, you know, high profile, uh, you know, uh, uh, big money over and over again. I think one year he had like four movies come out. Uh, he got canceled in, I believe, 2018, but there were hints of it it was already like percolating like in 2016, 17 ish. So the last thing that he really had come out was uh, Bright with Will Smith and that was like 2017. So it's been three years. So his heyday, oh, he was he, he wrote Chronicle. So it was like uh, 2012 to 2017, but I remember like 2015, he had something like four movies come out and then he had a bunch of huge deals. So. You know, he was, you know, feeling himself, as they say. But he was, you know, and he is an oversharer by nature. Um, uh, so it was just really cool to read all of his blogs and watch his videos. And then, um, uh, then everything just, just collapsed. But I had heard of this like a million times. He would always, he was one of those guys who would always mention like everything he did. Um, and he would do it like in a winking way, but it's also like, it feels like you're just bragging and you're trying to like put an ironic finish on it. So, uh, Without even looking it up, I can tell you literally everything he's written because if you watch his videos, he would mention every single one every single time. So, uh, a lot of these movies I watch, they're very intense, and the way I watch movies is very intensely. Like, if I don't, yeah, I, I got the closed captioning on, and if I don't understand one word, I'm gonna, I'm gonna you know, rewind it. If I space out, I'm gonna rewind the whole thing. So it, it takes me like days to watch a movie. So. It popped up in um, Netflix like a couple months ago. I was like, really? I would think with all the canceling that something written by someone who was canceled. But then you look on Netflix and Amazon Prime Video and there's stuff by canceled people all over the place. Um, so finally, and the, the other thing <laughs> about it is that, and you can probably tell from this thumbnail, I'm, I am guessing record low views of uh, this review 
is that it seemed designed for me to hate it. Mr. Right sounds like some Touchstone Pictures movie from 1991 starring Bette Midler and let's just say Rick Moranis. Um, it's, it's, it's such a generic played out title. And then when the humor is, oh my gosh, he has a clown nose. And oh my gosh, he has cat ears. That's so cute. Like I hate, I can't, every time I would see or think of this movie for five years, it would just, I don't know, I'm not going to say fill me with rage. I would get very annoyed and I go, oh, it's stupid, so stupid. So I said, you know what? I'm going to do what I do sometimes. I'm going to watch it just to roast it. And I'm going to have a fun... I love this movie. I watched it twice. <laughs> I watched it. And I was like, huh, I can't really get a review out of that. And then I had, you know, it's kind of nibbling away at a couple different movies. And they're, they're good movies. But I was like, I kind of want to watch Mr. Right again. Oh my gosh, what's happening to me? So Mr. Right stars Sam Rockwell and Anna Kendrick and uh, I had to memorize their names right before I started this because I just would have described them as the bad guy from Iron Man 2 that isn't Mickey Rourke and the girl with the teeth who's in everything and always annoys me. Um, the interesting is they're supposed to be ironically off-putting minimally charming characters and they both Nail that. <laughs> so Anna Kendrick is like, oh my gosh, such a random girl. And her boyfriend uh, cheats on her and then she pretends to get drunk. Now I'm saying the character is supposed to be drunk. This is the least convincing intoxication I have ever seen on screen. It, did anyone have a phase where like that was one of the things you would pretend when you were younger? Oh, look at me, I'm drunk. And you would just like... You, you didn't really know what drunk was being, so you would just be like, I'm dumb and dizzy. And I mean, vaguely, that's kind of it, but not really. Um, uh, so, like, I have never seen someone seem more sober while really poorly pretending to be drunk. So she's going through a breakup, and then there's this guy uh, who uh, is usually not named for most of it. And uh, that's um, Sam Rockwell. Sam Rockwell is one of those guys where he used to always play, well, he pretty much usually always plays the quirky character. And that usually really gets on my nerves. So I'm like, oh, hey, it's Sam Rockwell playing the exact same guy the exact same way for the 20th time. And everyone acts like it's so damn delightful. Wait, was he a villain in a Charlie's Angels movie too? I think he was. I think... Was he the villain in the second Charlie's? Why is he always the villain in the second movie? Um, uh, Star Trek II, The Wrath of... Uh, I've already forgotten his name. I've already forgotten his name. Sam Rockwell. Uh, <laughs> so uh, anyway, it's... Um, now, here's the thing about this. So, you know, back in the day, he was always giving his lessons, which, which was him humble bragging, but it was like a social media way, you know, 2015 2016 way to humble brag this really isn't a movie it's a screenplay you might say what's the difference um at some point you know a movie is immersive and i was literally almost seeing the scene transitions like the titles on them as you know you know exterior apartment courtyard day like it is such a screenplay specifically kind of that grandson or grand nephew of the Tarantino. If you're old enough to remember Tarantino's first heyday in the early 90s, you remember 10 to 15 years of really, really bad rip-off Tarantino. The really, really bad rip-off Tarantino would be like the stepdad of this movie. It is, it is a screenplay written to be bought as a screenplay and then accidentally made into a movie without ever saying, oh, can we like not make this so screenplay-ish? Uh, the best way I would uh, I would give an example is I, I, I actually accidentally uploaded this on my main channel, but it was a review of a documentary about the making of the Fantastic Four movie from 1994. And everyone's very excited and they're all talking about it. And then one guy who played the main character. He speaks like this. 
not in the movie, but in the interview. Like, and you're like, dude, you sound like an actor. You sound like an actor acting. And that's what this is. It's a screenplay being written as a movie. But they found two actors, or an actor, actress, that I usually get annoyed as shit with, who usually play the same character over and over, and somehow it works. I think it's because everyone else kind of compliment or comments on how annoying they are. Uh, whereas in the other, you know, quirky, quirky, LOL, so random, they'll be like a mean person who says that they're annoying, but everyone else finds them either normal or delightful. Like nobody finds these people delightful. Only each other do they find delightful. And they do have pretty good chemistry. They're um, uh, annoying, but uh, made for each other. Um, that's probably a better uh, tagline than the whatever stupid generic thing is on the poster that I already forgot. But it's in the thumbnail, so you're reading it right now if you're looking at the screen. Uh, so anyway, uh, Sam Rockwell plays a hitman named Shme who got some uh, brain damage in Serbia. And now he's a killer who kills people who hires killers. Jeez, this is... This is such a screenplay. This is such a pitch. It's not a story. It's a screenplay. It's a pitch. Um, that aspect is barely even mentioned. Um, and it's mainly just have Anna Kendrick and Sam Rockwell be kind of cute, pretty annoying, fairly charming, with good chemistry, just doing different things. I mean, I got as much entertainment out of them eating a hot dog and just little comments that almost kind of sound ad-libbed um, uh, to each other. And uh, then the fight scenes are actually fairly solid. It's got a really good cast. It's got James Ransom, Som, who I remember as the, the number two from Generation Kill. It's got Christopher Pike, Dylan Mount. Uh, it's got uh, Riza. It's got a whole bunch of people. I, like I said, one of the things was that Max Landis was the it guy in 2015. So if you're confused, why did all of these people sign up for a movie that made $400,000 in the theaters? It's because Max Landis was the it guy. He had the powerful agent agency. All the, all the momentum was going with him at this time. Um, and it's got Tim freaking Roth in it doing the worst, worst Southern American accent you have ever heard. Um, uh, I'm trying to think of anyone else is memorable in it. Uh, it's, it's, it's like fun. It's like stupid. Here's the deal. Like the second time I was paying more attention to the plot, there's a fairly overcomplicated plot with these two brothers who are hiding out from a, a slaughter of the main character that was conducted in New Jersey recently. Um, the funny thing is this gang, <laughs> again, getting back to like, this is not a movie, it's a screenplay. None of the gangsters feel like gangsters. They all feel like super L.A. scene, you know, wannabe actors. Like, they got this one guy called Johnny Moon. He looks like every cliche L.A. guy ever. James Ransone can look like lots of different people, but they make him look like every L.A. actor. And so do, like, five other characters. Like, is this a play within a play? Is this a movie within a movie? Like, how come... This, like, everything seems written and everyone is very obviously an actor. It's, it, you kind of have to see it to know what I'm talking about. Uh, the fight scenes are actually pretty good. This, the, the main character has this philosophy about, like, energies flowing through their universe and you can kind of catch on their waves and if you go with it, you know, it, it makes things, you know, uh, more fluid. It was kind of a cool, unique fighting style. Um, uh, and, uh, yeah, so I have no idea if you'll like this or not. I have no idea. It was a very intricate sequence sequence of events that led me to liking this, perhaps a lot for meta, you know, textual reasons, but I still liked it, and I liked it enough to watch it a second time, and I just might watch it a third. So anyway, uh, thanks for watching. Subscribe, make sure you're still subscribed, hit the bell for notifications. Thanks to everyone given to the Oh, I don't do that here. Eh, I'm just I'm always forgetting what channel I'm on these days. Yeah. Anyway, it's on Netflix in America. Thanks for watching. Bye.